in regards to residual income, where you can do a job once and get paid again and again. Come along to our presentation and you'll be able to hear what we actually do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else next? Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of people here today. Oh, no, here, that's okay. It's Sunday, it's got fashion time. <laughs> yeah, it's got fashion, but mm -hmm. hi again, it's Garnet. Um, just a little comment. I work with young people because I want to. I enjoy communicating both ways. I learn a lot. But one thing, I will set up a foundation, and that was. What's good for you is good for me. What's good for me is good for that young person. So we sit and we decide how do we proceed in me teaching them and learning from them. And we came up with this little statement. You have to recognize whatever you don't like that's happening around you, you reorganize. And once you find that and it's not working, or it does work, eventually you have to repair that's, that's not working. And then you have to continue a bit further than that, which is called replenish. What does that sound like to you? It sounds like it's a plan to succeed rather than have no plan and hope. Okay? In that case, we have no hope as a community because we asked a question earlier on and there is not an end to that question as in the suggestion how are we going to move forward. I have a plan. I brought that plan together with young people, which is how we're going to bring our community back. And I'd like to know that in the new year, we continue where we started and actually come up with a plan rather than just talk about and making statements. I'm sorry, but when I sit with young people and they say to me, that's why we don't really communicate with you. You say that Sunday, Tuesday, you've forgotten. In two months' time, you don't even remember that you said that because you're going about your business. Money, bills, right? So that comes before them. Now, that was part of my statement why young people don't really have to communicate with us because we're only going to tell them what we've told them a thousand times rather than sit with them and make a plan. How often do you sit with your child and make a plan? Now, or before, or in the future, it's just going to get worse. So that's really what I wanted to say to you. And if you're really going to get to the bottom of it, let's tell ourselves the truth that we have failed ourselves. And we probably failed the majority of our young people. And we're probably going to continue failing. Why? Because we think that we can solve it for them without them. Sorry. I'm just letting you know that is my point. That we cannot do it without them. We cannot do it without a plan. And we continue to talk about it and do nothing about it. Yeah, you can swim. Keep on swimming in the sea. How long are you going to keep on swimming for before you drown? Thank you, guys. Okay, next. Hello everybody, it's me again. I just want to quickly just I'm gonna keep this brief. It's like what the brother just said was setting up exactly what I'm about to talk about. I'm quickly about to talk about responsibility. And what he said is very, very true. As a community, the elders seem to be failing the youngness. And what we need to we need to think about be thinking generationally. I'm I'm talking about ec economically. The fact that a lot of the youngest have to go to another person to get a job. It, to, to, to be able to get money into their pockets is not a good thing. So what I want to say is that me now, I'm working with people to create opportunities, business opportunities for persons, like the sister said earlier, to create residual income. We need to learn from people who are actually in that position, who know about money and get financial education. There is a very person, I'm not, I'm not endorsing any other people, but there is wisdom in one quote. I'm not going to mention the person's name. There's a wisdom when he says, if you're serious about maintaining what, which every single one of us should do, to be able to hand down to our children, if you're serious about maintaining what, you should have seven streams of passive and residual income. So what I want to do is, if you, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be around, you can talk. And so I've got some flyers, where I've got my personal number, WhatsApp me, and we'll talk. I have presentations as well. And we can talk about ways what I and my team are developing residual income. Okay? So, with love and peace, but with seriousness as well. And when you're serious about that, do contact me. Okay, I want to add to that in regards to how we spend our spending habits. Um, we know that before it goes to retail, somebody's buying it much cheaper, right? Do we all agree? Yeah. yeah? Right, so what would you say if... I, or a group of us says, 
okay, I've got an, I've got a company account. I can go to I can go to a cash and carry or wholesale and buy our essentials. Would you be happy to chip in your money instead of you buying from a typical retailer like Waitrose who put it up like 200, 300, 500%? Would you be happy to pay less and get more? Yes or no? Yep. Now, you will have more money into your pocket, right? Okay, let's act today, okay? If we need essentials, whether it's toilet roll, toothpaste, whatever it is, let's buy together, food together. I'm losing money, you're losing money. They're winning at the end of the day, and with their money, they've created more things to destroy you. In your food, they say it's, they say it's organic, but it's not organic. Unfortunately, no, it's not organic. Not unless you've got a garden, then you can say, yes, I'm eating healthy, okay? I could try my best to try to source out all these organic fruits and vegetables, but the only way I can com really continue to feed my community in the best way that I can is if we all work together. Yes, I agree with So has anybody got a garden or an allotment that we can actually help each other grow? Yes or no? I'm appalled to, to see that one finger up. I'm, 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 I'm appalled. It's over there, I saw it over one. there. One. Okay, we, we mean you can talk. And then, if anything, we can literally just help each other out because we need to fight together. Let me ask somebody a question. Your groceries that you've done this week, how much do you pay? Ouch. Stop there. 100, ouch, 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 ouch. Now, we could have all went to wholesale, brought whatever you like, whether it's your sweet potato or whatever it is, Irish moss, whatever. We could have all chipped in and got a lot out of it. When you start thinking straight as a people now, we acting stupid. We're buying things that we don't need. And I have no qualms with people, okay? If, you, if you've got a problem with um, your self-identity, you start wearing weed and things like that, or you've got a medical issue, I can't step into that. I'm not judging no one. But we need to start really thinking, what are we spending our money on? Who's winning at the end of the day? Before the spirit takes over me, let me just pass the mic to another place. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Much love with you. take just a moment to just say a couple of things. Um, you know, regarding the, the food thing, yeah, I think it is very important. You know, it's, it's late now, you know, I mean, we're looking at the problems uh, when we should have dealt with them a long, long time ago. But it is a positive thing. And in fact, maybe one of the good things that we could have here is we could actually discuss the whole question of business and economics. Yeah, because, my, you know, I'm a bit of a skeptic. My view is that black people don't really understand economics. Yeah, so uh, you know that sounds bad, but we you need to understand the reasons why. So maybe we could have a session where we actually look at the whole question of business. Because if you notice carefully, right, most of the businesses that black people function in are two: West Indian takeaway and hairdressers. Yeah, and there's a lesson to learn there, yeah? but we failed to learn that lesson. Yeah, and the lesson is why do those two businesses work? Because they depend on black clientele. So if you want your business to succeed, you must gauge it on black people or else it can fall. Yeah? Away from that, I would like to say, I'm going to read a poem, but I'd like to also point out, I've got some books over there, which I would consider to be very important, but you know, self-praise is no recommendation. You've got a book there, which, is got, which the President of the United States has got a copy of. Yeah? And also... The, pres the, the, the president of Russia has got a copy of that book. There is a book, this book here is in Harvard University, and the, the highest price paid for this book is, has been £1,460 second hand, yeah? Now, anyway, on the theme, I'm going to finish. Now, on the theme of education and the disjuncture, right, it's someone else used the term, right, but... You know, we've got, we've got generation, intergenerational disjuncture, 
right? Which is what I, which is what the problem is between the older generation and the younger generation. And I would like to finish with a poem which I, I did cite on the radio at some point in the past, and it's called Liberation. And I'm going to read it to you because I hope it will benefit us in terms of our vision. Yeah, Liberation. Liberation. Hello, sir. Liberation. We've got to liberate our people from their asylums. For their reasoning and logic maintains that we are all fools. We've got to protect our children against their education. We've got to save them from the schools. We've got to liberate our people from their asylums. In white straight jackets, they're helpless against kinky doctors with crazy tools. The man must wriggle because he's helpless. The dread must wriggle because he knows he's cool. And yet, both must undergo mental castration so they can be packaged and labelled as fools. We've got to liberate our children from their education. We have got to save them from their schools. For with this education, we will always be underachievers. And with this tool, our mighty men, they rule. Boom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, last one.